The webinar will begin shortly. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Hello and welcome to the WAVE HDC webinar series. Today we'll be discussing five reasons why paper costs, paper forms cost more than you realize in collaboration with our technology partner, Shadowbox. Attendees will be able to learn about the true cost of paper requisitions for diagnostic and clinical labs understand the hidden costs associated with processing paper requisitions and utilizing fax machines, along with learning about automation and data curation solutions provided by Shadowbox and Wave HDC. We will then be wrapping up with the Q&A portion. If you have any questions during the webinar, please use the Q&A function within Zoom and we'll answer those at the end of the webinar. And now for our panelists. Dean Pollock is the Chief Revenue Officer at Wave HDC. Dean specializes in healthcare revenue cycle and has accumulated over 30 years of experience in senior leadership positions with WebMD, Medical Manager, McKesson, Experian Health, and TransUnion Health. Dean has spent considerable time in the space of eligibility, insurance discovery, and the use of credit data for financial assistance and propensity to pay. In addition to his stripes as a technology entrepreneur, Dean has been a distinguished leader in automated sales and marketing systems, most notably salesforce.com and Marketo Marketing Automation. And Greg Stein, who is the CEO of Shadowbox. Greg was an early investor and employee in Millennium Health. Initially hired to perform industry analysis and corporate development strategy, he ultimately engaged in solving challenges across the enterprise at Millennium. In late 2016, he identified a new game-changing technology with the potential to dramatically advance intraoperability to healthcare. After significant market research and analysis in late 2017, Greg founded Shadowbox to bring this advanced technology to the healthcare market. I will be handing off to Dean now as we begin discussing the problem with paper. Thank you, Val. Well, problem with paper requisitions are that they're costly, they create errors, and they add stress and delays uh, to the revenue cycle performance and your claim reimbursement. Uh, they're hard to read, they're time consuming for referral sources to complete accurately and completely. And it's a manual process. Anytime you have a manual process, you're introducing the potential of human error. Uh, there's also no safety valve or safety net to ensure that everything that's needed for you to build that claim is on the form. Uh, even though paper forms are the number one source of data errors, uh, poor data coming from, you know, into your billing system or your limb system from antiquated e EHR or EMR systems uh, integration is also a problem. Uh, the data that's being sent through those traditional EMR integrations often are sending data that has not yet been updated with the patient's new information that has been presented at the time of the appointment. We find that about 30% of the data from coming from these old traditional systems uh, that do not have the ability to validate the information that's coming into your systems is inaccurate, missing um, critical data that we need for billing. So according to the largest claims clearinghouse in the US, 44% of the claim rejections are due to registration errors and missing or invalid data. <clears throat> Process transactions on paper um, or old technology are highly prone to errors and omissions. Paper forms cannot ensure that all the necessary information is populated. Uh, paper is subject to loss, destruction, or damage in transit. Orders on paper also provide no alert. 
uh, that the, the requisition is en route to the laboratory. Uh, and, and old EMR integrations have the required data fields oftentimes that we need, but they do not have the ability to validate the coverage and the demographic information, uh, which then causes inaccuracies in your limbs and billing systems. Common errors that we experience are missing insurance and subscriber IDs, uh, misspelled names, inaccurate dates of birth, blank fields, uh, and, and just missing addresses and, and, and uh, errors and omissions. Because of this missing data, the Office of Inspector General estimates that 8% of all laboratory claims in the United States that should have legitimately been reimbursed do not get reimbursed. So what we're going to discuss today is how technology can allow you to uh, electronically access the information from the physician EMR that you are not currently receiving on the order form uh, and also being able to validate uh, the information coming in from potentially old legacy systems and how this new technology can replace paper forms and antiquated legacy EMR integrations uh, and how this information on the orders can be validated before it's sent to your limbs or billing systems regardless of paper um, uh, requisitions or old systems. So the question becomes, thanks Dean for, uh, for the sharing the, the challenges of paper. Why, why are so many labs still using paper? So why don't we go to the next slide and let's talk about it. Um, here's some stats, um, but the real reason we believe that, uh, that, that, that labs are still using paper orders is really, uh, well, there's multifold, but the biggest reason is that labs tend to start with paper. I mean, it's the path of least initial resistance. A clinic agrees to use the lab services. The sales rep says, great, hands the ordering clinician or nurse a stack of forms and specimen collection devices, and they're essentially ready to start ordering. Easy peasy. And sales reps want that sale, and they most really want to avoid the discussion that happens when the practice demands an electronic interface. Because when a clinician demands electronic interface, all hell breaks loose. Uh, before we invented Chatterbox, that was just a really tough situation for sales reps. To respond to the clinic, they'd have to engage in a series of interactions between the clinic, the lab home office staff, the EHR vendor, often third-party integration vendors. They'd have to find out, well, what EHR is the clinic using? What's the potential volume of orders? And what type of test might they be ordering? Uh, would they need to um, know the, the patient insurance or payer mix? so they know whether or not they might actually get paid on these orders that are coming through. Uh, they need to find out um, if there were any third-party vendors and if they needed to be involved and paid. With all that information, LabHQ would have to make a business decision as to whether or not to invest in creating an integration. And often in my experience, the numbers didn't add up. So it was either commits the clinic to use paper orders or walk away from business, which happened far too often. And here's the thing, back at Lab HQ, even if a, a traditional integration was greenlit, the IT team would, sh would be frustrated because I've never met an IT person who didn't have more to do than, uh, than, 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 was, uh, than time in the day or staff. And so before Shadowbox, and we'll talk more about Shadowbox as a technology later, it could cost thousands of dollars, it could take months to set up, and there could be multiple parties that you'd have to interact with to set up. And lab IT staff would be focused on doing uh, integration after integration after integration. And once they got all these integrations set up, then there'd be a revision to the test menu and they'd have to go back integration by integration and redo the integrations. Um, it was consuming, time consuming, it's frustrating. And, uh, and, and, uh, and so often you would have paper orders simply as a backstop for the inability to integrate fast enough, the inability or the lack of staff or, or, or dollars to, to, uh, to do traditional integrations. Uh, and even when those traditional integrations were done, to Dean's earlier point, you still weren't necessarily getting the best possible information at the time of order. And, uh, and so we've seen that the costs associated with, uh, with, with doing paper orders, even though it's that initial sort of path of least resistance are significant. And the truth is, is that labs, because of their integration, traditional backend integration experience has been so frustrating that there's this false belief 
that investing in automation is just too costly for small, mid-sized labs, or even just labs that have too much on their plate to invest in those things. Why don't we go on to the next slide? So I started to think about why labs are using all this paper and what is it actually costing to use all this paper? I mean, it's just a piece of paper. How much could it possibly cost? And I was really surprised when I uh, actually started to do the math. And so I'm gonna take the next few minutes and I'm gonna walk through the sort of the five categories I came up with and the costs and dig into how each of those categories add cost and ultimately share with you the true cost of each and every paper order that you receive at the lab. And the answer is going to blow you away. I, I mean, I promise you. So here on this slide, as you can see, there are uh, five different categories that I put together in terms of the actual cost of paper. So first of all, paper is expensive. You've designed forms, you have to print forms, you have to ship forms, and then you have to distribute forms. And although it only costs only about a buck 25 or so to print a, uh, uh, um, a triplicate lab order form, it's all the other costs associated with it that actually drive an increase in the supplies and logistics associated with that piece of paper. You have revisions and reprints. You have trunk stock that's, that, that's, that's never used or distributed. You're overstocking clinics and they're using forms. Uh, they're not using all the forms that they've been distributed to. Uh, because a paper order is, is, doesn't provide the lab with any insight into whether a order is actually being made or not, you have these regular courier routes and you're paying a courier to stop by at the office uh, to pick up a, a specimen and there's no specimen to pick up. Um, if there's a change or a revision and you haven't been able to get your new set of, 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 of paper forms back out to the clinics, you have stickers and other workarounds to enable clinicians to order your, your newest test or deal with new ask and order entry question challenges. Um, and then at the end of the day, once you've received all this paper at the lab, you're now having to store it for HIPAA compliance reasons. So now you're storing uh, it uh, and, and dealing with the security associated with making sure that that paper is properly secured and compliant. So when you add up all these costs, we estimate that an actual piece of paper that arrives at the lab doesn't cost you that buck 25 just to print it. It costs you somewhere between five and $750 just to get that first paper order in the door. So number two and number three, they kind of go together, but they're separate. Uh, and somebody has to enter the data for all these forms. So uh, you've got, uh, you have people that are trying to, they open up the packages of orders that come in, you have soiled, uh, you have illegible, you have incomplete, and you have these accessioners that are trying to get this data into their limb system. And, and, and generate the, the, the accurate and appropriate orders so that they can actually perform the services requested by the clinic. Um, and also to enter the information that's necessary for the lab to get billed. And some labs will split that into accessioning and then have the people at the back end do, uh, do the validation of or attempt to find the insurance information and fill out the claims. But either way, you have people that are doing data entry with information that is often incomplete or illegible. I can't tell you how many forms come in the door, whether it's a fax machine or, or attached to the specimen, and, uh, and there's a, simply a first and last name and an insurance card on the back, and a line through the list of uh, you know, potent, you know, potential orders. Did they order the panel? Did they order individual tests? Um, and so the, the actual cost of the data entry is very significant. In fact, there was a study done that said that of 228 manually entered lab requests, uh, compared to 228 automated ones, 25% of the uh, the manually entered uh, um, uh, forms were incomplete, and 55% were considered difficult to read and understand. Altogether, that adds somewhere between 250 and 375 a form uh, due to the, all that that challenge. And of course, you have to have people who are doing this. So this gets into number three. And of course, hiring and retaining entry level staff is constantly challenging with turnover and wage inflation. Um, the jobs are labor intensive, they're repetitive, they're prone to error. Uh, and even if you're able to hire and train, and we assess that, uh, that an accessioner could eff effectively enter in somewhere between around 30 paper forms an hour, uh, but they're human. They come in late for work, they get sick, they go on breaks, they have vacations, they get distracted. Um, across a lab enterprise, this 30 forms per hour is actually quite generous. Um, especially when you think about all the missing information, looking at the, you know, trying to dry out a, a, wet, a wet order form that because of a leaking specimen or what have you. 
Um, data entry people cost around $15 an hour. And so you're looking at at least 50 cents just on the accessioner side if they're able to maintain that, but they're not robots. So again, uh, that, that number is significantly higher. And if you have people on the revenue cycle management side that are doing the work, they're even more expensive, uh, about 70 cents a claim. And so collectively, the staffing challenges that we estimate add another 250 to 375 per order. And that gets us into the diet denial situation. As Dean said at the beginning, even the information that is received, if it's accurately transferred from the EA, from the order into the system and, and accurately fulfilled in the, in, the, uh, in the claims, because so much of it is missing or incorrect or inaccurate at its, uh, at its outset from the EHR, uh, and because in that translation process, there are quite a few um, you know, errors that happen because of human intervention, you're getting more denials. Um, and I actually read a study that said that 61% of initial claim denials are related to, um, to missing inaccurate or incomplete information. And that same study said that about uh, the cost of appealing a denial can be very expensive, some are as high as $40 per appeal. And so with paper claims being the highest level of of, uh, of, of claim that is typically being uh, denied initially and requiring the back end effort to go and get that information. You're sending your reps out. You're, you've got a you know, room full of clerks at the lab that are calling practices. You're annoying your practices with this request for information. We feel the cost of uh, incomplete and accurate claims related to paper for each claim that comes, each paper order that comes in, somewhere between $12.50 and another $15 uh, per order that comes into the practice. Uh, and, and then you've got bad debt. And I, I can tell you, I can't, well, I, I wish I didn't have to tell you, but how many times we sat with payers at the end of each month or quarter, the 90 day uh, you know, uh, process for, for commercial claims had, had, had expired. We didn't get the information. We had challenges from our clinicians being able to send us the information we needed. There are questions about, well, they didn't, they didn't send you a, a, prior, uh, you know, a prior test, which would be demonstrating medical necessity. They didn't sign the form. So many different reasons why payers are not uh, are not paying these claims that legitimately are related to legitimate services for legitimate orders and legitimately need to be claimed. And of course, the cost of those write-offs can be all over the place, depending on the size of the of the of the uh, um, you know the, the pricing of that particular uh, test uh, meant, you know, that's been ordered. It also could be you know how aggressive the the payer is in terms of how much they're, uh, they're willing to pay on these sort of uh, you know, extended accounts receivables that, are, that, that, that we're having, that you have at the lab. I mean, I've been in a room where we've said, please just pay us 50 cents on the dollar for, for what you owe us, just so we can get it off our balance sheet. Because it, labs are a conveyor belt. Uh, as you're trying to work on these issues at the back end, trying to resolve them, there's always more coming in the front. And at some point you just cannot get to all of the issues that are there. And so there's a huge amount of bad debt that's associated with these paper forms primarily. And so all in, you may or may not be surprised to hear that uh, we estimate and go to the next slide, that the cost of all of these uh, challenges, supplies and logistics, data entry costs, staffing challenges, denial after denial, increased bad debt. All in, every form that's written on paper that comes into your lab Cost you thirty dollars or more, and uh, and 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 that's just crazy. Um, and and when you think about it from a a, a thirty thousand foot level, from a business management level, um, there has to be a better way. And there is, and there is, um, there is a way that you can eliminate these costs, make electronic ordering and results fast and simple. It doesn't break the bank. Uh, it doesn't take forever to start using. Um, and then of course. It's important to understand that it's not just about uh, go, getting the electronic ordering up and running. It's also about getting great data, complete data, accurate data. And that's what we're going to be talking about next. So let's go to the next slide. And, and really, um, it is about the power of strategic collaboration. When Shadowbox was first started, first started, we immediately realized that even though, and I'll talk more about what Shadowbox does, even though we were accessing data in the EHR at the time of order, there is so many downstream functions that are costly to address. And it was through identifying partners like Wave and the wonderful relationship we have built in working with our mutual uh, customers together 
where we've actually developed something where one plus one equals 100. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Dean and, uh, and he's gonna share with you some background on WAVE and then we'll go from there. Thanks, Greg. So WAVE has a vast resource of patient data. We have over 325 million Americans in our database with their primary, secondary, tertiary insurances with their demographic data, address corrections, uh, other information that can be used to instantaneously fix a record that's coming in uh, to your internal systems, your limb system, your billing system, your EMR. Uh, but bad data coming from paper orders and legacy EMR systems, it's like a virus. Uh, once it enters your system, it's very difficult to get rid of, it's difficult to correct, it's difficult to track where it got sent, uh, and it's costly and time consuming uh, to the organization. The problem is that you know, data needs to be fixed before it enters your in-house systems, uh, if possible. And uh, you know, we can have the best data in the world, but if we don't have a vehicle by which to get that data to us so that we can very rapidly and accurately correct it, uh, then you know, the data is, is of little use. And, and so Shadowbox is that vehicle that allows our clients to very rapidly get us things that would have normally come in on paper uh, and things that come in from legacy systems that need to be validated uh, to us. Shadowbox allows our clients to extract that data um, uh, that's available uh, in the EMRs and allows us to correct and verify that data and then um, readmit that data into your environment um, already cleaned. So we, we avoid or eliminate the garbage in, garbage out scenario or the virus scenario of the bad data coming in. So uh, thanks, Dean. And, and so Dean's referred to Shadowbox technology. I certainly have this entire webinar and probably be helpful for me to explain actually what it is and how it works. Um, so as a lab guy for nearly a decade before Shadowbox, I, I just knew, fundamentally knew that there was a better way for clinics to establish uh, electronic ordering and receiving results. So I got together with some really smart engineers and we invented and patented a new technology that we call Shadowbox. And essentially what it is, is just a really smart browser. It's like Chrome or Safari and how it works, uh, except when a clinic opens their browser-based EHR when logged into our shadow box technology, which is white labeled for our laboratory customers, the technology immediately identifies all the various fields in the patient's chart. So demographics, ICD-10 codes, insurance information, contact information, no matter where that data lives, inside the EHR. And with the click of an easy button, which is right there on the screen, it presents an order form that's customized for each of our lab's test compendiums. So all the data that is necessary, that is otherwise a data entry problem, is immediately taken out of the EHR, wherever it may live, securely, compliantly, and instantly, and populates that order form uh, exactly where it needs to go, exactly correctly as it is in the EHR. And then all that the clinic has to do is uh, select the test they wish to order, uh, complete the ask and order entry questions, and click submit. And every time that order is then converted in either an HL7 message or into a, uh, an API payload, and it's sent to the lens. However, and this is where the power comes in, is if we have been able to insert the WAVE healthcare data curation process in between the accessing the data from the EHR and submitting it into the lab. And so all of those situations where you have data that's out of data incorrect or simply they haven't uh, entered it uh, you know, fully in the EHR system can now be identified and updated before it is inserted into the lens before that virus is, is there, that cancer that takes is so hard to eradicate. So why don't we go on to the next stream? And so I'm going to talk about uh, how this is helpful um, from, the, from the clinic side, acquisition side, which is on the left-hand side of the screen. And then Dean will talk about why it's so important to do these functions at the time of order and how helpful it is uh, from the WAVE perspective. So look, I mean, that lab business is highly competitive as you all know. There are so many variables that come into play when winning and retaining clinic customers. Uh, it's about how fast the lab can get that first specimen in the door and return a result. And that process that shows how competent and how different your lab is versus the next person that walks in the door. I mean, 
uh, at, you know, how deep, at, you know, once you get that sort of initial process going, then other questions start to come up like, okay, well, tell me more about your test menu or what kind of clinical support do you provide or what's your pathway for getting a network for more of my patients? These are all great things and all things that sales reps are constantly doing in their interactions with the customer. But if they can get that first specimen of the lab and the clinic, uh, the lab can return that result and demonstrate through their unique lab result process, uh, how powerful their tool is compared to everyone else, they're so much more likely to get that second order and the third order in the door. So when it comes to this critical sales need, Shadowbox has no parallel in the market because uh, your sales rep, rep talks to the, to, the, uh, to the clinic, they wanna start using you, great. It takes a few minutes to set up the clinic on the backend portal. It takes a few more minutes to download and install the Shadowbox browser application uh, at the ordering station. It takes a few more minutes to train the staff uh, on this extremely simple user interface because they're looking at the EHR they use every single day, except now there's an easy button for ordering the lab test. I mean, we've seen this entire process from, yes, I wanna use you, setting up the practice in the back end, downloading, installing, and training, take 30 minutes or, month, or, or less. Not months, not tens of thousands of dollars because Shadowbox is a subscription service. There's no serial integration fees to worry about with the EHR vendors, third-party integrators, list vendors, et cetera. Uh, you are simply able to install. doesn't matter if the practice is ordering one test a month or every six months or 100 tests a day. Uh, the whole back end rigmarole about is this practice going to have an ROI for my lab, that whole conversation goes away. And this reduces your customer acquisition costs. This makes lab ordering compliant and easy. And now I'm reading the bullets, radically improving your sales operations. This is important too, because uh, Shadowbox presents a uniform user experience and user interface across all of your clinicians using that, that ordering process. You don't have to deal with each individual EHR's own various way of ordering lab tests through traditional integration, their ask it order entry question processes, et cetera. If you need to change your test menu, you add a test, you remove a test, you have a new question that you have to ask because the government asked for it or not, whatever it may be, you can update it on the back end, and the next time the practice opens the, uh, the application, they're seeing that new test. They're not seeing the test you've removed, and it's not a sequential process. It's instant. And from your sales rep's perspective, in terms of training those practices and making sure that those practices are able to consistently uh, know, you know what's available to them and, and order, they don't have to learn how each different EHR presents the lab ordering process. Uh, it's a simple, universal solution that is very rapid and very cost-effective. And of course, not only are you collecting uh, information quickly, but especially in collaboration with, with Dean and the folks at WAVE, you're getting accurate, you're getting complete orders at the time of order. So let me turn it over to Dean to talk about why that's so important again. And so this front-end automation and data correction solves a lot of downstream problems in advance of that inaccurate data causing eligibility rejections, uh, claim denials, uh, and then you know, saving you all that rework, time and energy of fixing uh, these uh, denials <clears throat> and or the lost revenue because you don't have the resources or time to fix the denials. Now, there's a lot of other benefits as well. Uh, for example, attaching notes and payer or government mandated data uh, uh, at the initiation of the order, uh, initiating a prior authorization, verifying eligibility uh, and uh, data validation and correction in real time. Uh, there's other things that some laboratories are doing depending on specialty, such as getting a patient's um, propensity to pay and ability to pay scoring to qualify them for discounted care and financial assistance programs, and also use that data in AR follow-up uh, segmentation. And then lastly, you know, good faith estimates, being able to provide a patient with a good faith estimate at a draw center or um, uh, as early in the process as possible or when requested. So in summary, we could share with you that uh, Wave and Shadowbox together create an incredibly powerful solution. Uh, again, we eliminate the shipping, storage and printing costs of paper the, we eliminate the need to stock forms, uh, both in the, in the trunks of your reps, as well as the practices that are your customers. 
It streamlines your workflows from start to finish all the way through. It improves your client relationships. And this is really critical. Uh, it's so important once you win a customer to be able to keep them happy and retain them. And reducing the phone calls after the fact into the practice so that they aren't having to get distracted from the next patient that's coming in the door or whatever they have to do. They're always busy, of course. Uh, distracting them with a phone call and having to get them on the fax machine um, it, it, you know, to send information or to over the phone correct information, you know, and to do so all in a HIPAA compliance secure fashion, um, it's, it's really a challenge to the client. And so eliminating that is just a huge piece of what we offer. And because it is a visual side-by-side -side presentation, it gives the practice the ability to actually see what's happening. When you're doing a traditional order through a traditional interface, you're just clicking send. And you have absolutely no idea what might be going on wrong in the background in terms of a missing um, a missing diagnosis code, for example. And so Shadowbox uh, collectively helps with all of these types of information. And of course, I spent quite a bit of time in the last slide talking about supporting the sales cycle. And in this day and age, when COVID dollars have dried up, uh, thankfully, uh, from a, a human perspective, um, so many labs are turning to clinics to be able to uh, to, to uh, utilize their their uh, investment in, in 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 machinery and and to drive their 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 revenue and their business. And so supporting that sales cycle is just a, such a critical piece of all of this. Yeah, and, and also, Greg, it, it also accelerates the time to reimbursement. Also ensures that things that might not have been reimbursed previously um, with this new process will get reimbursed. Um, <clears throat> It improves the patient experience, uh, as well as, as you mentioned earlier, the client experience, where we're not calling them and asking for this additional information and taking them or their staff away from uh, treating patients. Um, it shifts the focus uh, of, of staff members to more important tasks like appeals, denials, um, prior authorizations, um, and it boosts employee morale. You know, they're, they're not going to be doing busy work anymore or uh, or trying to uh, track down information, they're using their expertise to add value to the organization in other areas. And uh, they're also eliminating the need uh, for increase in staff. So as, as you're growing and adding new clients, um, it slows the need to be adding additional people because a lot of this data is being electronically validated and entered into the system electronically at the front end of the process. And then ultimately this helps reduce costs of the operation, but also um, can provide a significant ROI on top of it. Thank you both Greg and Dean. We'll go ahead and open it for questions and begin our Q&A portion of the webinar. All right, I see the first one. We spend a lot of money on paper requisitions. How do we have that conversation with our executives? Greg, do you want to take that one? Yeah, well, I think that uh, the best way to speak to an executive about the challenge of these paper forms and the costs is to is to tell a story. And and so I'll tell you a story about how it became as an executive in a lab so so visual to me. And that was uh, I went out on a uh, a ride along with one of our reps, and uh, he picked me up at the hotel. We're on our way to the clinic. We decide to stop and pick up some Einstein bagels and coffee because we were doing sort of a breakfast and learn with uh, some clinical support. And when we put the open the when he opened the trunk and we're putting the the the, the food in there, I saw on the one side of the trunk, you know, wrap, shrink wrapped boxes full of requisition forms, and strewn throughout the rest of the trunk were hundreds, maybe even thousands of forms. Uh, you know, and, and I'm saying, and I asked the rep, what, what's going on here? He said, well, we just had another revision uh, and we have to you know, pull all the old forms out of the practices and we have to send them new forms. And, uh, and so these are the forms I picked up, the ones that were strewn all over and here's the forms I'm dropping off. We walked into the practice uh, eventually and, and he went through the process of pulling the form and, and getting a new form. And he, sent, he, pr he provided a stack of about 150 forms. And, uh, and, you know, just a giant stack. And, and I said, how many do they order? He's like, oh, you know, 50 a month. And, uh, and, and so it struck me at that moment that how much waste 
was involved in that. All the forms that were in the trunk that were never ordered uh, and, and just the cost of printing and shipping and all of that. And so that's how I would recommend that a that that if you're a sales rep or a sales leader, especially, or you're in the finance department, that you raise this chain and you actually talk about and, and lay it out. Use the slide deck. We'll make it available to you. Lay out the true cost of these forms and then compare it to opportunities for doing electronic integrations. And 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 of course, we're happy to share with you how Shadowbox becomes a, a very cost effective alternative to utilizing paper forms. Thank you, Greg. Next question. Claim denial rates are rising at our lab. What are you seeing at other facilities? Dean, do you want to take this question? Sure. Well, um, the average denial rate has risen over the last several years over 20%. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Payers are hiding behind HIPAA. They want uh, the information that's coming into them to be perfect. Uh, and so it's just another way for payers to create more profit and revenue um, or not pay out on claims. But it's also making technology like uh, Wave and Shadowbox more and more important uh, to get that data accurate, uh, even if it's inaccurate coming in on the orders. Um, the um, lost revenue from claims denials is on the rise as well. You know, lack of staff to work those denials, the uh, increased staff turnover, um, a lot of the expertise goes out the door when those staff members leave. And so there's a lot of retraining that has to be done. You know, and the, and the, gr the growing denial backlog um, and lack of automation to help solve that problem. Uh, it's also expensive. Um, according to the uh, CAQH, uh, uh, appeal denials uh, cost between $20 and $40 per claim, which kind of takes, that's why a lot of people don't do it. Uh, because of the, you know, you're going to lose money with putting in the effort in to do that. So um, because orders on paper represent a, a large amount of those denials, you know, we kind of put them at the front end of the blame scale, but also, you know, let's not let the uh, old EMR legacy systems that aren't validating the information off the hook. Um, uh, Greg and I are going to be doing another webinar coming up here in, uh, in, in the new year, 2023, that focuses on those legacy systems and how you can also make them a much much more effective uh, uh, and um, uh, an integration much um, more robust. Um, so we, to answer your question, we are seeing that everywhere. It's not unique to your lab. Thank you, Dean. <clears throat> Next question we have. We all know it takes a lot of time and we're lucky to have 30 lab requisition forms in an hour. My lab staff, we don't seem to have a process to process at that rate. You mentioned that we can do 30 in an hour. What are you using to calculate that? Um, so that was, again, based upon my experience at the lab. Uh, so, you know, a, a, uh, and we tried to be as efficient as possible. In fact, we would time uh, every single step of the process. And so, um, you know, when you think about that, you're, you're an accessioner, you've got a, a shipment comes in, somebody opens up the, uh, opens up the, the shipment and they, they make sure to try and sort the, 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 the order forms that come in uh, that way. Uh, and, and of course, if they're soil ones or wet ones, they, they set those aside for you know, special processing. And, uh, and then it goes, you know, sort of in a box uh, to, the, to the accessioner and the accessioner pulls it up and starts entering data. Now, if they're lucky, um, that patient is a repeat order, and they might have some information that is already in the, the, the limb system. And so some of that information might already be there. Um, but if they're not, um, then their order, then they're entering in, it could be as much as you know, 25 different fields. Uh, you want to make sure as well that you know that if it is the, the you know the there is a patient in the system, is it John Smith in the system and John A. Smith on the order? So you have to utilize, you know, your smarts to try and figure out through other data that may or may not even be on that order paper order form as to whether or not it's the correct patient that you're actually attaching the order to. Um, and so, uh, you, know, you know, that is in and of itself, uh, you know, a couple of minutes just to go through that whole process. And that isn't even, you know, sort of thinking in the fact that, or thinking about the fact that so many of those orders come in where, like I said, there's a first and last name on the front page, but then you look at the second page because that's where they attach the insurance card. And now you're kind of squinting at a Xerox 
uh, uh, you know, a copy of, of, uh, of an insurance card uh, and you're trying to type in those numbers. And just that process is extremely time consuming. And, and of course, because people have vacations and they go, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they, they get sick and they come in late and they leave early and they get distracted. Um, you're actually staffing more people than you are, uh, than you are maybe necessarily need because again, with paper orders, you have absolutely no idea what the number of specimens are that are gonna come in the next day. Um, so, um, so that's why uh, it, it, there is that kind of a challenge and why it takes so long to enter in these paper orders. And that's why we figure it's at least two minutes in order. Thank you, Greg. Next question. Um, our laboratory had a record number of claims that were lost to timely filing in 2022. What are you seeing at other labs? Um, let me take that one, Greg. Um, you know, that's that, there's actually a twofold question there. Uh, there's the timely filing, which is your initial 90 to 120 days with commercial and your initial 12 months with Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, but there's also the, um, the timeline on appeals and how payers have shortened up those timelines uh, for you to actually appeal a claim. So um, part of the problem that we see, and, and we're seeing that everywhere, uh, part of it is that labs just don't have the staffing. As people are leaving, it's very difficult to restaff and rehire um, for people to be able to do a lot of the research to go find the information uh, to, to not only hit the initial timely filing, which is very short window and commercial, uh, but also the appeal time, uh, the appeal on the ones that do get rejected once they're sent in. Um, and um, so uh, we are seeing that. I mean, we see an estimated 65% of claim denials uh, that need to be reworked and appeal don't get, don't get completed. So um, it's not unique, uh, especially with paper requisitions where you're missing information. Doctors' offices, even patients are, are, have been reluctant to provide that information. In fact, even the sales staff, your own sales staff is reluctant to have you or even them go and approach the practices to get the information. So uh, it's, it's a problem everywhere. And it's compounded by the fact that a lot of you know, the data that's coming in is inaccurate and the volume. So uh, the problem is, you know, we can fix what we can fix today, but tomorrow is another day. And we've got the same number of problems coming in tomorrow uh, as we had yesterday, unless we figure out a way to fix the incorrect data coming in on these paper requisitions and on the in, in, um, inefficient uh, EMR integrations, uh, you, you, we're not going to be able to solve that problem. Good data into the system uh, is the only real way to solve that. Thank you, Dean. And it looks like last question we have here. We're all struggling to hire people and replace positions right now. What do you guesstimate we can save on staffing per hour? Is that a, a question that you think I, I could answer? Yes. Um, okay, so what can we save in staffing? Well, uh, if you know how many uh, orders are coming in the next day uh, because they're electronically ordered and queued up for you already in your limbs, you could appropriately staff at the, at the front end uh, in terms of the, the, the folks who are pulling the, the specimens out of the, the shipping containers and prepping them for accession. You can appropriately staff for the data entry folks who are accessioning and actually entering the, you know, entering the uh, information in to the limb systems. You can appropriately manage uh, and parse out those, uh, those test processes that are faster or require a, a faster turnaround from those that require longer. And so you can appropriately uh, organize your lab process and operations to ensure that you have the right people doing the right tests at the right time in the right order. And of course, on the back end, because you are uh, getting clean, accurate data and you're avoiding in collaboration with WAVE, you're avoiding having the bad data um, you know, enter the system, you're saving on uh, the people who are uh, calling clinics for additional information. You're saving on the, the, the number of people who are now filing uh, um, appeals to denied claims. You're saving on the number of uh, staff hours in the field that are spent on collecting data versus winning new customers and retaining customers or training them on new clinical benefits. Uh, additionally, you are 
uh, enabling your IT staff, which uh, you know, that's a huge cost and challenge for labs to be able to have high quality IT staff and keep them focused or to enable them to be focused on the things that benefit the lab as opposed to these repetitive integrations. So collectively, I mean, I, I, maybe I should do a, 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 we should, Dean, we should think about doing a webinar in the future on just the staffing costs associated with the collaboration between our two companies and how much money it saves and how much revenue it generates as a result of utilizing our two services together. And to add to that, uh, we, we recently in, in 2022, we did time and motion studies at clients to determine how long does it actually take to fix this information? And we would go in, uh, you know, pre-implementation and then review post-implementation, uh, the staffing levels uh, and the time. Uh, when, we, when we add all the data together, and a lot of it depends on the type of specialty of lab, but on average, it took 28 minutes for the average data correction. So a staff member that's doing nothing but trying to go find information, going to pair websites, calling physician offices, is fixing between 15 and 20 um, of those sessions a day. So, you know, I think the way to look at it is if that data can be pulled in and corrected in advance and verified in advance, how many people do you have in your organization that are manually doing that? And, uh, and uh, so, um, so it really comes down to, uh, I always look at, you know, call it, we can do 15 to 20 a day. How many do we have that we have to do? And the majority of that will be, uh, will be eliminated. Thank you both so much, Dean um, and Greg, for your time today. Thank you all attendees for joining us. The session was recorded and will be updated um, and uploaded to our websites shortly. If you have either interest in Wave HDC or Shadowbox, please head over to our websites. All righty. Thank you for your attendance. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, everyone.